welcome back everybody um happy first of all happy new year to everybody and um let's hope it's going to be a better year than last year because last year well looking at it at the moment it don't look like it's going to be does it but hopefully things will pick up and we'll have a better year than what we did last year so um anyway before we start as usual i'm going to give a quick mention to a few of the following um, subscribers who's left very nice comments um, Curtis Armstrong, Brian Thornton, ADUK, Chris Williams, John O'Neill, uh, Titi Parisian, from France, I think, I think that one is, um, Ryan Butler, Bill Holmes, David Legal, Ian B, and Somo Dicas. Thank you all for your um, nice comments that you've been leaving. Um, I just want to make say something. There's quite a few few of you've been sending um, messages and emails and things like that about how to make the um, boxes and things like this and what paper to use what printer I use well I've done a video back along I mean <laughs> if you haven't watched it I mean watch the video um, it's all explained in that video it's, it's, a, it's a special video I put together because somebody asked me to do it and it's like it's, it's about three or four videos ago something like that and it's only a short thing it just shows what printer I've got and how I do it do the old print and the decals and, and the boxes and um, also somebody asked me um, where you know where do you get the templates and stuff like that well there is a, a Russian website you can get them from <clears throat> you only got to click on the picture it, it's, it's not got all of them but it's got quite a few and it's it seems to be most of the ones you can get on a DVD you can either buy the DVD from eBay or go on this website and you can pick up an odd few on there as well it's got corgi dinky it's in Russian, but I mean, you only got to click on what it looks like, you know. <laughs> it will come up in English, the actual pictures will be English. And you can save the pictures from there, but I mean, print them off, you're going to have to work out your own sort of strategy, you know, to get the right size. Like, print it on a bit of paper first and sort of measure it up with your model and make sure you've got the right size. So I can't sort of, you know, tell you how to do that because everybody's got different printers, haven't they? But yeah, I'll, what I'll do in this video, this is, this is the um, 417 Corgi Land Rover breakdown truck video. In the in the description, I've, I I also leave um, model supplies link there because I always get people still asking me where do I get the parts, and I tell them you know I mean the internet is there for, for everybody to use. It's the same way as as I do it. Just click on or you know do a search on Google. And you can find it all these all these things. You don't need time your email and me to ask me where I get parts. You could be, you know, clicking on the Google and just search for yourself. You desire for eBay. Or you can um, go to that model supplies place. Well I've got the link in the description down below. So I shall leave a link down in the description down here for this um for this website. It's um God, what's it called? M M G something studio I don't know, it's it's a funny old website but it's um you know you can get all your um corgi boxes dinky boxes not all of them but i mean quite a few and i've picked off quite a few there's, there's like original scans of them and some of them is like what's been sort of reproduced scans if you know what i mean like a reproduced copy of the originals like you know so it's up to you which ones you use but like i say the print of them you're gonna have to work out for yourselves i'm afraid i can't can't help you there with that but anyway, um, you know, we all had a nice Christmas, and um, it's nice to be back. Um, got a few, few of your um, little messages here, just to just to get on with. Um, Chris Cocker, nice recap. I was on about the old, the last video, me Christmas, you know, video with the snow. <laughs> How many of you did I catch up with that? <laughs> <clears throat> nice um, recap, Bob. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you, Mrs. Bob. Oh. 2021 brings forth better things for everyone yeah so do i I've, you know we're all a bit pissed off of um 2020 ain't we what a bloody nightmare that was uh crap old nick um nice one bob like the snow and the old santa <laughs> it's not till you do a video like this that you realize how many models you have restored yeah it is it's quite surprising how many it, you know they do mount up very quick over the year They've been all top class restorations and I've really enjoyed um, looking and looked forward to every one of them. 
I've also learned a hell of a lot from you too. So many thanks for taking the time to make and post your videos. All the best to you and Mrs. Bob. Take care, Nick. Thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate that. I'm glad I've helped you, you know, and anybody else. Jeff Baker, um, great reviews of your restorations of 2020. Enjoyed watching, Bob. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks, um, Jeff. Uh, I wish snow would come and go would come and go that fast. Lots of laughs. So he got he got the gag. I pray that 2021 20, treats us all better. You and your missus take care. Stay safe. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> John Duffield. The opening credits. I thought I was watching in the opening scenes of a Hollywood blockbuster. <clears throat> Come on, steady on, mate. <laughs> it wasn't that bloody good. Thanks for the entertainment value of your channel. Have a happy, healthy Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you very much, John. It wasn't that good, bloody hell. <laughs> um, Andre, or Andre Halbrick. Merry Christmas. Thank you for your excellent restoration videos. Best wishes from Germany. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, John Davey. Hi, Bob. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Uh, I... Oh great look back i can't even read again i'm getting tongue twisted here um <clears throat> great look back at your skills mm, wonder if that snow was filmed back in march 2019 yeah <laughs> well it wasn't actually it was 2018 <laughs> coincidentally i found some old film from that date today i if i had a bottle of vodka in my house it stays better in the freezer i'd be like iced ice lolly vodka no that's too cold <laughs> Yeah, all right, to get it a quick chill on it, I suppose, but um, it's the only way to drink it. Lovely little treat watching this instead of getting roped into a game of Cluedo. <laughs> Boring. Thanks, Bob. We'll have a peaceful Christmas and let's hope for a calmer 2021. <clears throat> Cheers. Thank you, John. Um, Alan Saxton. Merry Christmas, Bob. Nothing wrong with a wee dram or free. No, there ain't. Um, I'd rather a free, but. <laughs> <laughs> hope you get gonna make a snowman later and there i'll watch the video see you thought you fell for it didn't you <laughs> it's not real it wasn't really snow outside <laughs> it, was, it was a joke it was a gag <laughs> um colin price lovely job bob funny how watching someone have a drink makes you thirsty so i've got my jack on ice and a nice cold stella to wash it down don't blame you um Head of a glow. Great vid, Bob, and thanks so much for your work over the lockdown. You really helped giving me confidence to get into the hobby. Best thing I've done. I've had a great holiday, and Merry Christmas to you and Mrs. Willis and all your subscribers too. Cheers, Colin. Thank you, Colin. And he says, Merry Christmas to you all as well. So there you go. Oh, it's Jeff. Jeff Ford. Um, <clears throat> This is a guy who's, well, this, this guy sent me um, a couple of models which will be coming up soon as well. So thanks, Jeff, for sending them. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Bob, and your dear lady. White Christmas official this year. Looks like you got the best of the weather. <laughs> Don't say you fell for it as well, Jeff. Enjoy your refreshments. Stay safe and keep warm, buddy. Looking forward to more vids in the new year. <laughs> well, looks like two or three of you um, fell for the old snow joke. It's no joke. It's, well, I had to get that in, didn't I? Now, it's, that snow was um, about three years ago now. That was March 2018 I filmed that, and that's how bad it was here. I mean, when, you know, when, when I'd done the Christmas video, it wasn't like that outside, really. I just thought, hang on a minute, what can I do, you know? Oh, yeah, and that's what I'll do. I'll wind everybody up and make it it's snowing outside. You must have seen on a, on a, on a, bit, a few of the clips when I was like showing stuff, you must have seen like the sun was shining a bit. That was what the real weather was. It was a sunny day, actually. And I that's why I had to stop there and, and I had to put a, a pull the blinds to keep the effect going, to look, make out it's dull, see? But now it, it was a joke. It wasn't real snow. It, well, it was real snow, but it was three years ago. But I'm glad I caught a few of you. Anyway, I thought I'd just do it for a bit of a laugh. It was a bit Christmassy. I thought, yeah, why not? Just chuck in a bit of fun, like, you know. But anyway, that's um, I got nothing more to say for now. I'm uh, just, you know, happy to see you all again and um, nice of you to um, tune in again. I'm glad you all forgot me. Um, hopefully we can hit 3,000 subscribers this year with a bit of luck. Because I have noticed there's quite a few um, on the um, analytic thing you looks at on YouTube studio thing and all that. 
that you um I got seem to have more people sort of um watching the videos as that's actually you know actually sort of subscribed and I thought well why don't they just subscribe you know because it doesn't cost nothing does it get me up a bit you see but anyway I'm still I'm quite happy I'm happy you're happy and I'm happy you're happy with with me <laughs> if you can know what that means but anyway enough dribbling let's get on with the video this is um like i said it's a corgi um 417 417 it's the one with the suspension because I, i've done a car back along I, I don't know what it was now but it oh the thunderbird and it's it said it was a 215s and and i didn't know what the s meant and i thought it was sport but it's, apparently it's they put the s on the box one of, one of you lot told me i don't know who it was now somebody left a message and explain what the S meant, and it means that there's no suspension. Well, this is the one with the expansion, the suspension. I had a drop of whiskey earlier on. That's what it is. So I'm still, I'm still celebrating the new year. Um, this is, a, this is just the ordinary Corgi 417 breakdown truck. This one's got the suspension on it, so it's not the S. But this one's come out really well. From what I had to start with, it came out really, really well, and I'm very pleased with it. Thank you for. Um, sending that in. Um, oh, who sent it in again? I forgot now. I'm losing me losing me brain at the moment. So, but anyway, that's it for now. Enough, enough dribble from me. I'll try and get, come back to you again in the next video. A bit more, um, a bit more normal. Okay. So, um, till next time. Look after yourselves, folks. Appreciate you watching again and sticking with me. I'll see you all again very soon. But till then, it's. Bye bye for me. Bye bye. See ya. Okay, as you can see, folks, this one, <laughs> he's a little bit rough, this one. And um, it's going to take a bit of doing this one. I mean, look at that. I'm hoping that glass is alright underneath there. So I'm going to have to soak all that in some brake fluid or something to get it off. It looks like somebody's had a good scratching it off there, and it might be pretty scratched, so it might need a, a good bit of sanding down as well. That side's the same, that's all scratched. But yeah, it's in a bit of a mess this one. Now I've had to buy some spare parts for this, as you can see. The um, piece at the back, this piece is knacked. It's totally US. No, it's no good at all. It's, so what I've done, I've got a new one. And I have been over this, I've been on it with the old sandpaper and I've rubbed it down a bit. So all this this here is just a couple of rivets, and that's got to go on in place like that. So we've got that piece, and also we've got the hook, which um, we need a bit of string, obviously, to go on goes on here when we get all that piece out. And um, there's also a little light that goes on the top, and I've cleaned this up as best I can got rid of most of the um, there's, a, there's a couple little bits left there underneath it just needs finalizing really it's just you know I've got most of the actual um, what do they call it um, the flash when it comes out of the um, when it's been um, molded you know the molding flash I've tried to remove as much as I can on that one but the main job is this now this is like a tin type stuff they've made this out of. I thought this would have been plastic. And what it does, it goes on the back of here. It just clips on like that. But I've noticed it, these black marks here, this is what I've got to cut this off. Because that is meant to be the actual shape of it. But if you look at the shape, it's straight there and it goes up and it goes like that. And that's not how the shape of this thing is. So I'm going to have to cut all this off. I'll use me um, Dremel cutting disc get the most of it off and then I'll just fold the rest down nice and smooth but that's what I'm going to do first before I even strip this because I want to just you know see what it looks like on the thing and then that piece just goes in the top like that so that'll just glue in afterwards and then of course once all this is on we should be near enough back to you know like it's meant to be but like I said before I strip all that I'm going to have a go at this piece so I'm going to um, get me little um, get me a Dremel grinder or um, cutting tool and 
I'll use i would probably use my black and decker actually for this and just go ahead <coughs> go ahead and cut start cutting these bits off I'll take my brush out I have got a, I have got a disc that's pretty worn down it's a smaller disc now so it might make make life easier for me to cut cut a more closer line on it if you know what I mean I've, I'm going to show you one little piece of cutting it but I'm probably have to do the rest of it off camera because it, I want to make sure it's before I switch this on make sure it's on um, you know it's cutting pretty accurate you know because I can do it more accurate if I'm not filming it so I'll just do a little corner just to see what happens see how, how well it cuts there's a noisy bugger this one it can be right, so. I'll just go a little bit at a time Taking some cut on this stuff. I thought it would have cut a bit easier than this, but I think that's about it. That's not too bad. Once that's filed off, I might be able to get a little bit more off of it. too bad folks I'll do the other side that's no, not too bad has took the, the sharp edge off the pointed piece what it was is now rounded which is what it should be now all I've got to do is go around here cut this piece off and um, it should be more like the actual original look it's meant to be so I'll quickly do that a minute and then I'll bring it back and let you see the result there as you can see folks that's a lot better I've actually given it a bit of a undercoat with some grey primer and that's turned out really well it's got the curves now it's like it's meant to look on the original model not a straight up sort of cut down like a square box type looking thing it has got curves on it on the original model so now we've got our um, canopy almost ready I mean all I've got to do with that is just got to I think it's a yellow I think it is a yellow colour or is it red I'm not sure now I'll have to look but we can now go ahead now I've done this piece I'm happy with that piece now I wanted to get that out of the way now I'll go ahead and we'll get this one stripped and get it all nice and cleaned up so we've got to take it apart first so I'm going to put this aside and then we'll take the um, the Land Rover apart and see what we got. Right, we'll get on to do this now. I'll, I'll let you see the um, the hood in a minute, or the hood, the, the canopy. I have actually sprayed that up yellow, but this here part now needs to come out. And um, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I suppose you've got to 
Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Because they're in a lot of a pin there. Whether that will come through enough for me to fold that off, I don't know. I might have to just chuck the whole thing in the core stick and let it, you know, clear itself before I can take this piece out. But I put some little pilot holes in. I'm just drilling out these drill uh, rivets at the moment. So I'll get on and finish with that. enough oh, I think I might have to do a bit more actually just a little bit more the back one is very thin so it's you're gonna have to be very careful with this back one because there isn't a lot it, it, you know it's one of them very thin ones so we'll most probably have to glue that back there and put a dummy rivet on the top now that one there I don't really want to go too far I might have to chip that piece away but in the meantime, I want to take this piece off, and I think that's going to be just the same, but the rivets is going to probably show in behind there if, if we um, rivet that back. So you've got to, um, if I get it here, I'm trying to do it so you can see. I know I shouldn't have my hand behind it, but... I'm going slow. I mean, I ain't worried about damaging this bit. I just want to get as much of this rivet out of the way so as I can um, sort of prize that piece off, if you know what I mean. Even the camera's moving. I'm, I'm catching the bloody camera here. See, this is so awkward. <clears throat> I'm going to have to do this off camera, folks. I'm sorry about this, but... I can't reach around this bloody camera. Or this phone, I should say. But I'll get all this took to pieces, and then we'll just go on to stripping. I think that'll be the easiest way. You can see the, you can see here I'm showing you how to do it. Get them rivets off. Go very careful with that one, because it only goes through a thin piece of metal. And this one here, you got a post, so you're right with that one. But I'll get all this took off, and then we'll um, we'll start stripping it. Okay, guys, I've been here for at least a good half hour trying to get this bloody screen out. But as you can see, I mean, the paint is—it's all scratched anyway. So I don't even know if it's going to be any good when I've got the paint off. So I'm debating now. I've got a good idea. This this screen is going to be just no good. So I'm going to have to sort of just chuck it in the core stick as it is. I've got this wheel out. This um, wheel, it might look puzzling to start with. All it is, that side there, one side has got like a clean, if you look, I don't know if you can see it. Hang on, I'll try and see if the camera's going to work today. If I put that down. It's not focusing now, is it? Come on. There. If you look at that side, that's just a bit of paint. But if you look at the other side, it's got like a, you know, like a proper axle type sort of fitting, you know, and you just push it on and that stops it slipping round. So I think when we put this back together with the wheel on it, we'll put a bit of glue on that as well because you've got to be able to turn it, see? You don't want the wheel just spinning. But this, this ear, which comes off of here that goes inside of the actual bodywork all that is that is just a piece of rubber so we'll give that a good clean up it's just there look, it's just a, a rubber sleeve and then the wheel we'll give all that a good clean up but you can see inside the wheel actually that it just pushes on but it's quite easy to take apart once you've worked it out I mean it only, you know, it only goes in sort of bloody camera. It sort of goes in one side like that. It 
the cleaner and you push it so far up put your sleeve on and then pop it through there through the bottom piece and then you've got to you're going to have to like put the model up somewhere like that to support that to, to sort of push that or bang that wheel on bang the wheel on again onto the the actual spindle so that's going to be the the most dangerous part when we've got this back together because we don't want to damage the paint so we're going to have to put something under there and put it like that somehow and sort of bang it on without ruining the paint that's going to be the most awkward bit but anyway that will come out alright the only other thing is I've got this back piece off and these these hose they're slightly smaller than these and they won't go over but that's nothing they won't go over the, f the things like the rivets because I noticed it was glued as well but we shall um, make the hose a bit bigger and then what I'll probably do is I'll super glue that on and we'll use the magic um, epoxy resin again like we did before just to cover up them because you can't put rivet hose on there but we'll have to do it a bit neater this time but that'll sort that out so this here now I'm going to put this in the core stick because this this roof is on you can't even get it out the paint stuck it in there it just don't want to go and I've tried with a blade and it's just cracking the, the bits inside it's it's naff it is totally shot but with a bit of luck I have got a, a donor vehicle this this one here was sent quite a while back by Mr. Uh, what's he called Scott Scott from Opar's um, diecast registrations and he sent me a few cars he sent me a Jag and a couple other things some racing cars and he sent me this Land Rover was wheels Land Rover and the glass in this one looks pretty good so I'm going to raid this one and um, take the glass out of this one to put in our um, breakdown truck so um, we're not without a part I should have ordered a new piece for that one really but you know what it's like. I thought I could have got it out but it ain't going to come out so I'm going to take this screen out and get all this screen all nicely cleaned up and um, this, all this is going in the caustic soda like it is even the wheels and everything because the wheels are, you know, look at it look, they're all covered in crap all this got to go in the whole lot, that there I just want that as a guide <clears throat> that there I might chuck in the brake fluid actually with all that this here just to clean that up but there you go that's the story so far so let's get on and strip this thing okay right we've got it in now I've got the actual base plate on a piece of wire because I want to take that out before the rest you know what I mean and as you can see the red's coming off hopefully the glass will be um, melted in this solution it usually does get melted right let's take a base plate out because don't want to leave them wheels in too long but sometimes I've had things before where the wheels are bloody totally um, disintegrated and I'm not sure what type of wheels is on this one whether it's the sort that disintegrate or not <laughs> you know what I mean I'm talking a load of crap again but you know if it happens to you the wheels is looking pretty good now just want to get a bit off the, the body it ain't coming off the body so well look, as you can see it's still blue but I'm afraid to leave them in there because I don't want the wheels going to pop. I wonder if I get my um, tooth brush on that. See, that's the only trouble using the jar. I can't really get stuff in there like I can with the tray. Put it on a bit of cloth next to there. Give it a bit of a scrub. 
and then dip it again. I don't know what sort of paint that is, folks, but it doesn't want to bloody come off. That's starting to come off a bit now. It must be some type of emotion or something, I don't know. The picture stopped there for a second, I don't know why. Bloody old iPhone. Rubbish. That's why I use it as a camera, because it's not good for anything else. I don't like these iPhones. I leave mine plugged in all the time now. Waste of time they have batteries and all that. Well I'm gonna leave that one like that now, so I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna dip that anymore. I reckon that'll come off with the um wire brush now. You could say I've chickened out and I've gone as far as I'm willing to with that one. Right, well, um, <clears throat> I'll let that go for a bit longer. I wonder if I can see what it's turned out like. I'm going to get the belly thing up to come up a bit. Yeah, it looks not too bad. It looks like the glass is all disintegrated. So, um, let that go for a a little bit longer I'll let that soak for a while and then um, next time you see it, it should be wire brushed okay everybody it's all stripped and as you can see <laughs> there's there's the glass that's what happens if people's asked me before can you put plastic in caustic soda well yes and no as you can see if you put it in hot caustic soda this is what happens but if you let the caustic soda cool down a bit then you can you know quite safely put it in there because I have seen Rob on um, Matchbox Garage he's done it to get like chrome off of pieces and things like that so you can do it if it's cooled down but don't put it in hot caustic soda because that's what that's what will happen it melts and that's what I wanted to happen because I couldn't get the bloody thing out <laughs> Well, I've been busy. I've cleaned the base plate up. As you can see, the wheels have come up pretty good. I've got to polish these yet, anyway. This got, I'm, I might not bother with that. I'll just leave that and just paint the actual underside. But they've got to be polished up, masked. The axle's got to be masked up. And uh, that'll be that piece. I've also took that other screen out, that other Land Rover, and lucky, <laughs> look at the state of the top of it. I didn't know it was like that until I opened it. But lucky enough, it's all right around, you know, the bits we need. So, I mean, this top piece, it ain't going to matter. I can still put a bit of me gungy stuff on there and there to hold it in. So, And also a bonus, we've got a seating unit out of there as well. So that can might as well go in this one. I know this one didn't come with a seating unit, but if I've got it, I might as well bloody use it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it, it fits in there, so why not? So we're going to use that as well. So we're going to just just do a slight customization of this one. The original didn't have a seating unit, but this one's going to. Might as well use it. I've cleaned up this show. I've um I've got me little um wheel, um the sandpaper wheel I showed you how to make before. Just draw around on the back of the emery paper and put it on your Dremel. And I've been test fitting this piece here, and I've used a three and a half mil drill to go through this piece again just with me hand because it's very soft metal it, it, you know you don't need to put it on a power drill because you'll probably ruin it if you do that you'll cut too much away but when this is painted I'm going to have to scrape away the actual paint off of these rivets because otherwise you, it's going to be covered up anyway so it won't matter if you like sort of missing a few places but I want that as um, clean as I can have it really I want that metal 
actually I might just put a little bit of tape over each of them rivets and you know stop them getting sprayed because I don't really want these getting sprayed because this isn't this ain't going to push on again and I've had to use a pair of pliers to, to squeeze a flat pair of pliers a clean pair like this without the um without the teeth if you know what I mean the, and I've had to go like that and and sort of push it on like that but when we go to put this on again like I said I'll probably mask, put a little bit of mask tape over each of them rivets or to cover most of that bottom piece up there obviously not that piece because that's got to be painted but then that will stop the paint going on that and we'll have a nice clean surface to stick this thing to because I'm going to stick it I'm going to glue it and I'm going to put the um, a little blob of the old you know epoxy over the top just to cover it up so we want that to stick properly so that's what I'm going to end up doing with that but you know it ain't too bad it's taking shape it's going to um, it's going to be alright when it's done I think and I've got something else to show you I've actually done some breakdown service stickers and um, if I get my um, canopy what I sprayed up should be dry now because I have lacquered it we'll get that <clears throat> there's the canopy and as you can see that'll fit on there like that and it's a proper shape now it's got the curves like the originals meant to have it's not like a, a square cut sort of thing like that so that just pops on like that and I'm, I did guess half, I did a bit of guessing on these about the size and they will go on there that but they are transparent so once you got them on there on the sides it'll be um, looking pretty good I think so right let's get on with the next bit <clears throat> I think the next time you'll see this I'll have the oh I scratched it already that oh no that's why I had the clips holding it but I'm not bothered about that um, yeah when you see this again I'll have the, all these transfers put on it I'm not going to bother showing you putting transfers on you you know how that works right so the next bit now we're going to have to um, I think I'm going to have to put a bit of primer on this one because he is a bit rough like I say I've tried you know there is a bit of pitting here and there but that will have to come off again just pull you off like that that's what I'm saying there, let's see, I'm going to put a, bit of, a little bit of masking tape just around them just to stop them getting sprayed up because I don't want them sprayed up because I want the, you know, the proper metal to, for them to stick to, so yeah, so um, I'll do that and I'll get this primed and then the next time you see it, it'll be all primed masked up in the spray booth with the red going on Right, what I've done with the base plate, I've now, what I did is use a matte black on this, and then I've lacquered the actual base plate, but I sprayed the wheels as well, because what I'm going to do is re them, because they are a bit rough looking in some places, so I thought they wouldn't hurt with a bit of um, molotov on there to chrome them up, and get them looking, you know, really like brand new, but as you see, the base plate's not turned out too bad. Axles, of course, I masked them up. I didn't want them getting sprayed. So that's the next little job I'm going to do. There's the top. I was just test fitting the old light on the top. You only, well, you'll have to be glued in. If I can keep my fingers on it, he's going to have to be glued in like that. With just a little bit of glue. I might cut that off a bit there, actually. Because you do go down quite a bit that there. Um, piece is a bit small for the old, really. I don't know why they made such a small bloody pin on it. You'd think it would have been a bit tighter, but there you go. It's a repro part in it, say no more. In the meantime, I have stuck the decals on this piece. And they ain't come out too bad. So I've just got a lack of this piece over, just to seal them in. I've done them on the uh, transparent decal paper, because I wanted the actual yellow to show through properly. And I'm quite happy how they've come out. So that'll be the next job there, just to lacquer that over. 
and then in the meantime I've got to clean all this up so the next bit now though is going to be spraying the Land Rover okay as you see we'll um, give it the old coat of red little test squirt to start with as always and um, we'll see what it looks like after that this isn't going on too bad this paint it's, um, it's my usual brand high coat and it's bloody good paint you know for um, anything like this it really does go on nice I'll just give it the one coat to start with show you this bit but I will be giving it a few more coats and I'll um, do that off camera because you don't want to see me do the same thing over and over you know the score but I'm just making sure I'm getting every little um, every little crevice and then I'll let this dry and um, like I said give it a few more coats before I bring it back to you Okay then, it's all sprayed up as you see, and I masked off, like I said I was going to, that there, because that piece is going on there, this piece here, so I'm going to stick that on there now, I've also, I painted the front, the uh, headlights and the grille, and while it was drying, I've also finished off this one, there's the, the decoser now on it, I have lacquered it over again, and I've put this one on, but I've this one's meant to turn, I think, on the um, actual model, but you can't do it with a repo part, you, you know. I've also put a thing underneath there because I didn't like it. It was unsightly showing the horrible metal piece underneath. So I stuck a little furniture bloody plug thing underneath it. But, you know, that piece is finished, so we're all right with that. The cab... On this one, because it's an old one, you haven't got a pin that comes up on that there to hold this part in. So I've just tacked this on there with a five second fix onto the glass. So I'm going to put a bit of the old, um, what, do you, what do you call it, the rubber silicon on there and there. And I'm going to tack that one in like that and that load that one in. So I thought I might as well use, use the actual seating in a steering mode. You know, seeing I've got it. I've also put some tyres on this one now. I think they'll be alright for Range Rover. And that's about it, really. All we've got to do now is put this piece on. Which I'm going to do now. Because I want to um, use the um, epoxy. Now, the way I got this on last time is I used the um, flat tweezer things, or um, pliers. And I've sort of worked it on like that, but I mean, it should go on there because I am. Yeah, there it is. That's why I wanted to um, keep the paint away from it, if you know what I mean. So as I wouldn't have no problems getting this piece on again. But that's going to go on there. Well, I might have to touch that in a bit. Look, I've gone a bit too low on the underneath. I'm going to have to touch that in again afterwards. But that's going on right. So I'm going to put some glue under that now. Now I've got it fitting right. I just wanted to make sure it would go on before I did actually put the glue on it. So um, I'll stick a bit of super glue on it. And then what I'll do, I'll mix up a bit of epoxy and that and put that on the outside to cover up, you know, the rivet. Where the rivet comes through, to, just to hide it. So I'll just put a bit there like that. And a bit there. Don't have to go too crazy. Not like um, my old mate Nick. <laughs> I spoke to him the other day, and I was, I was saying about how much glue he uses on his models. It's, you know. It <laughs> It's meant to be super glue, Nick, you know? You don't need a lot. He seems to be very um, generous with the glue. But, you know, everybody, I suppose, to the, they want to make sure. 
but there that's that's all that needs for now so that'll that'll um give it a bit of strength and then i'm going to put some epoxy on there like i said to cover them hose up and then i'm going to lacquer this all over i don't have to worry about the chrome because that's just i, I haven't used the actual um molotov on that that's just the ordinary basic chrome paint because i wanted it to look more original if you know what i mean i didn't really want it very shiny so um i'm going to go ahead and do that so for you lot it's going to be a couple minutes but for me it's going to be another day because i've got to let that harden up that um that paint there and I've got to let that uh, um, what do you call it epoxy harden up when I put that on so the next time I bring it back we'll be, we'll be um, ready for assembly so not far off now right all this is lacquered now it's all sealed in the actual these things at the back what I did I was very careful putting that on because I wanted it to be a nice tidy round finish and they ain't come out too bad look. if you look here look, it looks nice you know nicely rounded off I didn't put the little dimples in there to make it look like rivets I thought I'll just leave it like that that's good enough and I've also um, painted the underneath of there where where I forgot <laughs> but yes yeah, it's, it's coming together nicely now <coughs> sorry <coughs> pardon me right the next bit we're going to put this um wheel back in so what we got to do with that we got this rubber thing as well and that goes over goes over there like that I think on some of them they have got a spring that goes up there but the trouble is I think that interferes with the actual rope when you you know when you're doing the rope <clears throat> so what you do you push that through there like that and then you push the other bit back through this piece that's the only snag is that bit of rubber catches on on your actual thing but that's where it's meant to go so it's just got to go in that way because that's how it come out so if I maybe push it down like that and turn that somehow I know I've got a better idea <coughs> <coughs> but if I push it up like that and then try try and push it on that way this can be for the old job there we go there it is there that's how it goes you push it right through like that and that gives it a bit of stiffness you see <clears throat> right then what you got to do then is get this bloody old wheel back on so to do that it's a spindle type fit and make sure the soft bit or the smooth bit is on the inside it might go on easy might not i think what i'll have to do is go off camera just for a sec and actually put this in a voice and squeeze the voice together like that just to gradually push that on so I'll do that in a minute because I don't really want to bang it on I'll just I'll squeeze it on with the voice there as you see I've got it on I've, I've just simply squeezed it on did nearly bend it slightly it is a little tiny bend because I went a bit too far but it ain't too bad we can put our tire on there now and that will um, be easier for it to turn if I can get the bloody thing on I don't think this is a proper tire for it actually but you know it'll work it'll work for our needs there you go and then you can just you can turn it then right <clears throat> now that's done I think I'll put the glass in actually I'll just put that down there a minute. Get me all um, 
what should we call it glue well it's not glue is it it's um i'll pull the camera back slightly oh then broken off a bloody thing then the aquamate as you know i always use this stuff so we'll uh, put a bit on there because we ain't got a lot of roof to um, play around with here because as I said it was um, it was falling off or it was cracked open the, the actual um, roof I can't get this stuff to come out now right that do put a bit of that on there and a bit more on there just to be sure should be enough don't want tons of it and you see like I said I stuck that to the bottom because this is not supposed to be a, um, an interior version this one hasn't got an interior by rights right we'll let that go for a minute I think it's in as far as it would go I could um, just jog the camera, push that down slightly like that just to make sure it is properly in there. It seems it is. <coughs> looking like in there, yeah, it's looking like it's pushed in. Right, there's our windscreen and our cab put in. Right, we'll stick the old bit of string through now. So remember, push it through there, because I've already got the hook on, so if you haven't got the hook on, it doesn't matter. And then push it through the O, if you've got good eyesight, which I haven't. <laughs> Especially if the string's bigger than the bloody O, it won't go through, will it? Right, there we go, and then just turn that slightly like that. Pull that up. <clears throat> now all I'm going to do is put a put a knot in this to stop that coming through. I'm not going to tie it onto the actual axle. Some people do. Some you know just put a knot in it. A knot will do the same job. <laughs> there, that ain't going to go back through. <clears throat> we'll cut that little bit off. That little bit of excess. I'll keep banging this bloody camera. And then we'll just pull that through again. Turn that around, that'll be a bit easier. And there we've got, there's a bit of fluff in there. There we've got our um, hook sorted out. And just wind him up like that. <coughs> and there we go. That's that done. Now, there's not a lot more I can show you really, folks. I mean, I could clip that back on, but that's about it. But I'm going to just put the rivets back in this one now. Put, put the new rivets in and put it together. And um, we're going to look at it on the old turntable. But up to now, that's it. That's all I can show you. So let's have a look on the old turntable. Okay folks, as always, we'll um, take a quick look at what this looked like before we started. As you see, the jib on the back is all gone. And um, there's no hooks or string or anything, the glass. I was going to try and save the glass, but I couldn't get it out. And in the end, I just threw the whole lot in the caustic soda. And um, it actually melted it enough so I could um, pull it out. But luckily enough, I had a, another um, donor vehicle. A vehicle um, it was sent to me ages ago by uh, Opus Diecast Restorations and I used the interior and the glass out of that one this one never had an interior to start with because it's a really old version but after getting all the paint off and um, doing our magic on it well, take a look for yourself this is how it ended up new canopy I'm glad I did 
make the choice to cut that canopy down and put the curves in it because it did come to me as a repro part and it was all it's all straight lined and everything it just didn't look right made me own decals again as you can see i've done the done them on um, transparent um decal paper new set of tires new paint job new jib new hook new string shall i go on new spotlight the spotlight done turn but who cares it's a hundred percent better than what it was when it started it, lo it now looks new again and plus the interior now i think it looks really nice now so um hope you like this video thanks for watching again sticking with me and um i'll be back again as soon as i can maybe well most likely it'll be a couple of weeks again so till then hit the subscribe button and um see you again bye bye for now bye bye